Okay, um, this is part two video of the three part build process video. We have discussed step one and step two in the build process in part one video. In this video, we will go through on step three as the most demanding process, which is the construction of the panels. The step three workflows involving uh, creating the panel, cutting drawings from the templates. So I'm using Corel Draw to do it. And then I cut acrylic panels with various thickness uh, using 50 watt las uh, laser cut cutter. And then sandwich the panels and glue together uh, several panels required. And then paint it black or light gray depending on the panel colors. And, and then put it back into the laser engraving panels uh, to engrave uh, the, the lettering, the the marking and everything required to 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 make it panel looks like real panels and then uh, i fill up with the engrave uh, the engrave uh, letter or numbers with white paint acrylic paint and then put a final coat on top of the panels so basically that's the workflow of the panels so the first one is um, panel cutting drawing so before we create the panel itself i need to have a, a cut out drawings so my a laser cutter can machine can cut the acrylic accordingly so here is the example of the the drawing especially this one is for the front panel for example i i separate several panels uh, so i can easily duplicate that uh, or adjust it into the the panel box later on so here is the ddi left ddi the left warning uh, panels the uh, armament panels and uh, in integrated uh, fuel and engine indicator uh, and then the the jettison panels and the video panels so basically these panels are creating created individually so not attached to each other uh, but you can see here even the ddi have like one two three four four a uh, uh, layer uh, so the f the top layer which is actually painted black and usually engraved with uh, laser cutter for letters and markings and uh, the second layer the mid layer usually is the you having a, a bigger for for potential for example it had a bigger hole so the potentiometer can can be hidden behind the top layer including the switches so the the top layer opening is around like six millimeter but below the opening could be 12 millimeters so the the bolt of the this the potentiometer is hidden uh, from the from the top layer so you cannot see the the bolt uh, of the switches or the potentiometer the here the transparent layer is this uh, clear layer here uh, from acrylic which i later paint in a green transparent green dark transparent green using a, a marker pen ink so it's very good actually very uh, adhesive and really uh, in terms of the green so it's dark green but it's still if you shine a light uh, from behind it will shine through so uh, the 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 last layer is the bottom layer which I engraved this uh, ray a radar uh, sample here the radar screen so I engraved in the bottom layer I painted first the uh, clear acrylic with uh, uh, opaque green uh, olive green something like that and then engrave it in laser so it exposed the clear part of the acrylic back and then yeah and put behind the green clear transparent uh, layer so it it's and when you put a led uh, strip behind it when it's lighted it will expose uh, this this marking beautifully and for the switches uh for this cover switches i use a very special technique so i'm using a off the shelf uh, push button switch with cover with clear cover actually a plastic cover but then i i cut out the plastic using laser uh, to create this pattern and then paint it black so it's actually almost like a metal uh, cover uh, but it's actually a plastic cover being cut 
by laser so it's it's very nice uh, i saw someone really create from scratch building uh, from aluminium plate a thin plate or something which is quite difficult uh, and you have to cut out a very delicate holes like this so yeah so this is the example of how i do the uh, the cutout drawing first in color draw and save it actually into a lower version because my uh, laser cutter machine only accept like a uh, version 12 and then send send into the machine using a plugins uh, from that uh, coral draw provided so on this how to use this and how to laser cut i have to make a separate video on it because it's it's quite uh it's quite lengthy on how to to cut in uh using a laser cut but i'll, I'll show you how i do it later in this video this one is uh, just imagining it trying to put into the design it's quite a it's quite a demanding uh, process and it took me a long time that's why this this is probably the, one of the longest uh, uh, tasks that I need to complete before even I cut out into a laser cutter as mentioned I start with the side panel as uh, why I, I decided to to start with a side panel especially the left panel because there is a one piece of uh, complex hardware there which is actually the throttle mechanisms so here is the video of the my la laser machine working cutting out the this is cutting out the three millimeter acrylic board which is actually uh, used as a base to for the switches for the buttons to be attached to and then on top of it there is a two layer of two millimeter acrylics which is glued together and then painted and to cover the switches uh, underneath so you see here there is a there's a this is a glued two piece uh, two millimeters board and painted black already so there's a bigger circle uh, in and underneath because to to allow the bolt of the switches uh, to be covered by the top layer so this one has not been engraved yet uh, and um, yeah this is just you no know, you can see this is the laser machine still working uh, now this one is the process of engraving the, the the top panels which is already painted black and the, the engraving is done line by line so it's very very delicate and once it's finished I fill up with uh, white acrylic paints and then clean it up with alcohol the rest of the of the paint so the the recess yeah the recess uh, lines will keep the acrylic paint inside it and once I clean up uh, thoroughly then I I put a clear coat on it to secure the acrylic unfortunately later when in the process the addition of this acrylic paint in the recess line was probably not a good idea because at the end the LED that has to be shined through from the backlight of the panel which I already prepared in the base panel won't work because it's probably too thick and the light will not really shine through uh, effectively so it's creating a bit of fade uh, color uh, light uh, behind the lettering which in the other video or other people do is actually just engrave it without filling up the with the white uh, opaque uh, uh, acrylic so I think that's the mistake that I made for this build but yeah at the end I'm not using the backlight of each of the switches and lettering and marking so it's quite unfortunate so yeah so this one is the uh, starting from the left side as you can see this is uh, the finish uh, matte finish already clear coat with matte clear rather than glossy and I've already put uh, all the switches and some of the switches already put uh, the cap accordingly some of the round cap some of the pointy cap uh, flat round cap and this is the volume uh, knobs with potentiometer um, uh, this one is um, engine crank switch and APU for APU and engine I'm using a momentary on off switch 
and this rudder knobs I created myself uh, using a rotary encoder and and here the push button of the rotary encoder um, where if I can if I push it it will doing the rudder trim button this gain switch uh, toggle switch is actually uh, on, on off toggle switch but you cannot see here there's a, a micro switch lever here which I created using a 3d print uh, resin part if this open it will push a pin and then uh, push a micro switch underneath so what happened is that if I open it up it will trigger a switch and uh, imitate a cover switch opening inside DCS so these three switch have and one more in the right upper right side on the anti stall uh, co um, uh, to uh, cover switch it all it all has a micro switch that so I, I can imitate the opening of this lever uh, in DCS um, yeah the rest is not yet and the the, the hot test uh, x55 side deck is not yet uh, put into this panels yet so the next build that I need to do and just quite complex as I mentioned is the modified Cytec X55. So finally I decided to sacrifice my X55 throttle you know hot task controller. I got it out I got it out tear apart and actually cut partially to allow the box included in the panels the throttle itself is quite short right uh, in the original uh, versions because i need to put this box under the panels um the length of the lever is not enough right so i need to 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 add this um, 3d printed materials to connect from this part into the throttle uh, base uh, moving mechanisms so replacing the plastic uh, real uh, original uh, le lever of the X55 Hotas throttle. So this printed in solid 100% uh, fill materials to create a very strong uh, plastic. Um, and then screwed this one into the X55 thro uh, Hotas throttle. And then slide in a square steel metal tubes actually. Uh, into this uh, this uh, protruding area so I can extend this up to 20 centimeters at least uh, above the current throttle so this is I have to create another bracket also to attach my throttle box into the base, base panel box on the left side and this is the real mechanism that I have to redesign the whole thing so first of all I created what we call it a uh, the D10 mechanisms for the throttles. Uh, since this one is cut uh, two piece, this is for only one side of the throttle. The, I have to create two, two, two times of this because there's left and right engine throttle, and this one is created by uh, using a five millimeters acrylic cut a laser laser cut, and this one is for the idle area, and this one is for the afterburner. So this one also cut from five millimeter acrylics and uh, glued actually uh, epoxy glued into this 3d printed mechanisms uh, the metal rod is here the metal square tubes the steel one and this focusing on this bottom area this is uh, the lever will be having a pin here with uh, a spring loaded here so if i pull it up it will go back uh, down uh, you know and I put a switch behind this so if hit micro switch it will tell the DCH it will be off position but if it's off the micro switch it will tell DCH that the, the lever is into the idle position starting idle finally I'm just reconnecting this whole mechanism including the potentiometer the buttons into uh, MM Joy controller the good things actually I can uh, design the the movement or the the mapping of the potentiometer differently so I put a very slow movement here but very fast uh, response 
into the last piece of the afterburner so that helps in uh, making a smooth uh, and fully usable range of this uh, analog and it's actually having a self uh, calibration every time I switch it on uh, the unit so it's very very nice feature of the MM Joy 2 uh, now we move into the right panels it's pretty easy after you you work with the left panel which is more complex the right one is mostly switches rotary encoder potentiometers for analog input on the back I haven't finished it is the glove box compartment that I've created custom built for this once I've successfully attached the throttle box into the base panel so seen here uh, but I've included and put a cover in it uh, so once I have complete and installed this one uh, I can put it in and try to fit out into the panels the next process that I haven't really shown here is the build of the vertical panels uh, left and right so this one is similar process with this I won't go deep in it but because of the several uh, unique key here uh, it occupies almost uh, you know a bigger area around here so I need to adjust the position of several dials and switches to accommodate that bigger uh, mechanisms behind it this one is one module this one is one module one module and one module so I have four modules now installed separately so this one is the video I think in the last video that I show you the the interactions that I that um, and so this here you can see the almost finished lever so this one is like uh, you know those those brush things you know uh, just to put or to put off the dust outside the uh, underneath the, on the lever area the throttle lever area where the grease are there and you know it's, you don't want a lot of dust coming into that area so again this is the finished one so from the last build um, so mm, this is potential mirror uh, this is rotary encoder everything is rotary encoder this one is rotary encoder also this one is potential mirror this one is also connected to potential mirror uh, the rest is uh, switches yeah this one is not yet connected electronically but everything is completed uh, this one is dual stack encoder so you can rotate the bottom part and the top part and this one is also encoder for air valve uh, air bleed valve uh, knobs uh, the analog here won't work it's just cosmetic everything is fixed so this one is push pull switch so push and then rotate so push pull and then rotate so this one is uh, the latest uh, mechanic for the hook so it's very strong and this catch mechanisms really feel good yeah, positive click uh, the gear handle is flimsy still in the final stage by replacing it with the ordinary toggle switch and this one is a jettison rotary encoder with push button apps toggle switch three position on 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 and this is a momentary switch momentary switch uh, and momentary switch it's a centerpiece of attractions <laughs> Uh, finger lift and uh, yeah so that is the brush things uh, you see here uh, to protect the dust from entering the lower level so here the switch yeah the potentiometer the light potentiometer again this is momentary switch you see momentary switch uh, this is toggle switch with micro switch underneath and yeah rudder trim switch fcs uh, reset modified one this is volumes uh, potential mirrors so analog axis later on map as analog axis remember uh, you see the, the line has been drawn here the black and white line marking for the for the knobs so so this one is a cheaper switch uh, it's very light but you don't have to modify it any on 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 uh, triple on switch so it's this one is also a cheap switch because it's rarely used anyway 
so this one is plastic one so you don't need to modify the triple on switch or triple position switch 